to a thousand dreams where you can discover yourself. In this video, I am going to show you how to do this mandala designed pot. So basically, mandala designs are full of colorful dots and patterns. In this video, I'm also going to demonstrate you how to do a few patterns that I have done on this pot. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you know when I post my new video. If you have tried any of my new art tutorials, don't forget to send me a picture of your artwork to my Gmail account which will be linked in the description box below. As well as, I'm also going to insert a few pictures for close-ups of this design. So without further ado, let's go! So first, we need to pour some paint into our palette. So now that I have put my paint on my palette, you can just dip in and start brushing. And remember to paint the bottom of your pot. After you're done applying your first coat, you should just let it balance on the table to dry. You might notice that I haven't painted the rim of the pot so that after the whole thing dries, I can easily just paint the rim. So first, we need to make our paint. For the mandala project, you will need a paintbrush. Then you'll need a glass of water as well as your favorite color paints or the paints you want to use for your mandala project. I am going to be using acrylic paint. Then you will need just a rough paper towel or a cloth as well as dotting tool. Now I'm going to show you how much water you need to add to your acrylic paint. So if your paint is very thin and diluted, you only need to add two drops. Then for normal acrylic paint, I suggest you put three or four drops. For a thick dimension acrylic paint, you can just put four to five then drops. You just want to mix it with the same brush that you added the water with. And now we're going to start with our mandala art project. So now what you want to do is take your smallest dot which can be applied. The way you should dip into your paint is just a nice dab in and then you're just going to press gently. You really need to focus on making your rows straight so that your dots are nice and even and then you want to dip into your new color my new color is going to be this fluorescent orange for this second row i'm just going to put my orange dots in between two of the white dots to make an even pattern like i said before just check on your pot to see if anything is wrong and then I'm going to be pressing just underneath an orange dot and this is how it looks after the third row of dots now we are not exactly completed with the third row because I am going to add a few more designs on the blue dots. So you want to go back to the mini dot and dip into your pink. And this part you might need to be really careful because what you have to do is you need to make a nice middle dot And then you have to make smaller dots by its side.
like this. And then you're going to do the same symmetrical on the other side of the blue dot. So you're going to dip back onto your middle dot and then start again like this. And now you're going to do this for all your blue dots. You want to use the point of the paint to make your dots nice and brown. Now we're going to do a few small dots with our yellow paint. We're just going to do one big dot in the middle or in between all of the blue dots. Now just clean your dotting tool with your paper towel or cloth and then I'm going to be using the other side of the mini one. I'm going to dip into the emerald now green. We're just going to be dotting a nice round emerald green dot just underneath your pink dot. Remember to dip into your emerald green paint after you dip every single dot. So what you're going to do is, you're going to be dipping back into pink. And you're going to make like an upside down ombre but with the sizes of dots. Like this. And you're going to continue to do that in between all of the green dots that you made. You need to put very light pressure when doing this because you might make the dots extremely big. So you're going to dip in your blue color. And then make side curves with the same stroke pipe. But this time, you're only going to be doing three dots. And then we're going to be continuing with more yellow dots at the bottom. I'm going to take slight, a slightly larger size for my yellow dots. You want to put it right underneath each green dot. Now we're going to make an ombre effect but with the size of dots just like we did before but this time we're only doing one stroke and with white. So your biggest dot will be right in between the two yellow dots that you made. And this is how it looks so far. This is going to be what we're going to do for the top. Now you just need to let it dry so that you can hold the top to do the bottom design, which we will do after the paint dries. Now that my pot is nice and dry on the top, we're going to start with the bottom. For the bottom, we're going to use the same colors as the last time so I just put some fresh paint and you know the process by now for the neon I'm putting two drops for these four colors I'm going to put three to four and for the emerald green I'm going to put maybe four to five drops just the same as yesterday and we're also going to be using the same tools so without further ado Let's go! So what you want to do now is you're going to dip it in a nice bright yellow. If you need to, you can also turn your pot upside down to get more control. 
Remember to keep it nice and equal spaced as well as keep it nice on the row and don't go skew like that. If you need to, you can always draw some pencil lines for a guide. Practicing over paper before the big project helps a lot. It gives you that confidence and you can also go much faster. Anyway, now you're going to take the same size tool and you're going to dip in some emerald green and make the same dots like the orange. You're going to keep it in between two of the yellow dots. And if you have any other ideas for my future videos, please comment down below. And this is the end of the second row. Now you want to take slightly a bigger side. What you want to do is you want to dip in some light pink and do the same as you did on the top here. This time you're going to put it in between the two green dots. You're going to put your spacing after each space. As I said before, you're going to be using this method to do it on these pink dots. But this time you're going to do it in a nice blue shade such as cerulean blue. So you're going to dip it and then you want to go in the middle of the pink dot and then go smaller on the side and go even smaller as you go upwards. A helpful tip for this pattern is to use the point of the paint when you dip it to make your dots nice and fine. We are going to be leaving a small space here in the middle so that the pot doesn't look like it's just full of dots because we need some negative space. And now you're going to take the same size that you used for the bottom pink big dot. So, but this time you're going to be using the neon or fluorescent orange. So you're just going to dip in it and put it right in between. Just like that. And continue doing this all around the pot. So now you're going to dip in some white and do the same as you did here. So you're going to put the big dot on the top and bring your way down like this. Then you're going to quickly take white again and dip a smaller dot in between. And then dip again and do another dot towards the bottom center, like this. If you need to, you can put another dot. So this time I'm going to put four in the middle and two on each side. So now you're just going to let it dry and then we're going to apply Mod Podge. I'm going to show you how to apply it after the paint this dries. This is how it looks after it is nice and dry. So now I'm going to show you how to apply Mod Podge. So you're going to dip in it with a nice dry and clean brush. And remember, if it has a few white spaces, it's fine because when it dries, it will dry see-through. You might want to go in one direction 
so that you can cover everything and when it dries you won't see any lines from the Mod Podge. So after putting a nice and thick coat, you just want to hang it or let it dry on a piece of newspaper or any scrap piece of paper. And after it dries, you're just going to paint this part as well as the inside. And remember to wash your brush as soon as you're done. Because you don't want your brush to get glued together. After 2-3 to three layers of Mod Podge, this is how it looks. You can see that it's nice and clear. And this is how it looks. Hope you like the final artwork. Don't forget to like. Share, subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you know when I post my new video. Bye!